fires broke out within a pair of Panhandle communities in the midst of Independence Day celebrations with KNOP's Panhandle Roundup. I'm Victoria Norgard. And last night, members of the Sydney Volunteer Fire Department responded to reports of a pickup that had caught fire and was threatening a home at 14th Avenue and Spruce Street. Minutes later, a semi-tractor trailer caught fire at Floyd Truck Center and was melted down to a pile of aluminum and steel. Medical personnel responded to the scene and tended to a firefighter with reported heat issues. The cause of the fires has not yet been announced, according to News Channel Nebraska. And meanwhile, authorities have reported a firework is believed to have caused a fire on the roof of a Bridgeport Elementary School Thursday morning. Officials were notified of the fire around 7.30 Mountain Time Thursday evening when a passerby noticed smoke and flames coming from the roof in school. Firefighters said the fire was burning on top of the roof and not from within the school. The fire was extinguished, but portions of the roof have been damaged and water damage occurred within the school. The official cause of the fire was not confirmed, but school officials say it was likely caused by a firework, according to KNEB. And a warning to boaters out on the water during the holiday weekend. Nebraska conservation officers will be on alert and watch. Operation Dry Water is a national heightened awareness and enforcement campaign focused on reducing the number of alcohol and drug-related incidents and deaths from July 4th to the 6th, during which time Nebraska Game and Parks conservation officers will have an enhanced presence on waters across the state with the goal of raising awareness and fostering a stronger, more visible deterrent to alcohol and drug use on the water. Alcohol use is the leading known contributing factor in fatal boating incidents, according to the U.S. Coast Guard recreational boating statistics. Since the inception of Operation Dry Water in 2009, law enforcement has removed nearly 7,000 BUI operators from the nation's waterways and contacted more than 2.8 million boaters during the enforcement. Just last year, 448 local, state, and federal agencies participated in Operation Dry Water, according to KNEB. And Jacob Stone of Alliance made his first appearance in court following a deadly October drunk driving crash that killed his passenger. Stone was indicted on manslaughter motor vehicle homicide with a prior DUI. Records show that Stone was driving 83 miles per hour before crashing into a vehicle. 28-year-old Dagan Pierce suffered severe head trauma and never regained consciousness. Prosecutors say Stone has four prior DUIs and he is back in court on July 9th, according to Canny B. And now here's a preview of your holiday weekend conditions. We're joined by meteorologist Justin Kraft. Thanks, Victoria. Looks like right now in the Panhandle, we're going to continue to see those clear skies and continue to see those clear skies throughout the day with those mostly sunny skies. Temperatures right now are in those 70s, 70 in Sydney, 75 in Kimball, 75 in Scotts. We'll have 72 in Alliance. With those temperatures in those 70s, we're continuing to see those winds blow in from the north and northwest at about 9 to 12 miles per hour. So we're going to keep those cooler winds for the rest of our Friday with those temperatures sticking around in those upper 70s to low 80s. And it looks like for tomorrow, and Sunday to finish out the weekend. There is a chance of rain and thunderstorms with temperatures in those high 80s on Saturday and then Sunday in those high 70s. And then on Monday, to start off next week, we're going to get back to this dry pattern and sunny skies and temperatures in those mid 80s. So it's going to be very nice once this rain and thunderstorms move out this weekend and to start off next week. And that's it for weather. Back to you, Victoria. Thank you, Justin. In Nebraska Agriculture reporting some concerning news, the department has confirmed a report of equine infectious anemia in Colfax County. It's an incurable virus, and the infected horse is the first in Nebraska in over a decade. Currently, it is in quarantine to reduce the risk of exposure. The virus spreads through contact with insects like horseflies or deerflies, and it can take up to 60 days for an animal to test positive for the virus. And making national headlines this morning, the FBI is investigating a deadly shooting at Yellowstone National Park. According to the National Park Service, the shooting happened early yesterday morning in the central part of Yellowstone's Canyon Village. They say someone with a firearm was making threats. When rangers contacted the individual, there was an exchange of gunfire and the suspect died. The Yellowstone law enforcement park ranger was taken to a nearby hospital and is stable. And U.S. job growth cooled as expected last month, but the labor market remained strong. That's according to new data released Friday by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. 206,000 new jobs were added in June. That's down from 215,000 the month before. The unemployment rate inched up from 4% to 4.1%, marking the first time since November the jobless rate was above 4%. As for Nebraska, the Department of Labor last reported our unemployment rate is sitting at 2.5%. Changing gears now, here's John Clanton with Panhandle Sports. Welcome to the Sports Desk. The Nebraska men's basketball team 
coming off a season in which they advanced to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 10 years. Now the Huskers looking for a follow up this coming season. And step one was this week as they began summer workouts. Players say the experience of making it into the NCAA tournament is boosting off season workouts. Never mind the Huskers widespread roster changes. The energy remains from last season's success. But um, you know, you love that feeling being one of the 64, I think now 68 when you get on um, the playing game or whatever, but just being one of those teams, but then also feeling a little bit of hunger because we didn't win. We didn't uh, make history for this school and we didn't like make a run like we wanted to, like we could have, or like we felt we could have. But um, I mean, just getting there, getting a taste of it and having the opportunity to potentially do it again. I mean, I just want an opportunity to do it again, try to make history with the team, with the squad. Good luck to the Nebraska men's basketball team. That's all from the sports desk. Everyone have a great weekend and see ya. And a furniture company is recalling one of its bookcases after it tipped over and killed a four year old child. Dania Furniture said you should stop using their Hayden bookcase immediately if it's not anchored to a wall and move it to an area where kids cannot access it. Over 900 of these bookcases were sold at Dania Furniture stores across the country. They were also sold on the company's website from November 2017 through February of this year. And Ford has announced a recall that affects more than 30,000 Mustang owners, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Mustangs with model years 2022 and 2023 need to be investigated. Officials say the vehicles in question might have an improperly calibrated steering sensor, which can cause the wheel to move involuntarily, pose a potential crash hazard. Customers are advised to ask their local Ford dealer about scheduling a free software update. And lastly, while several nations around the world are experimenting with a four-day work week, Greece this week went in another direction, implementing a six-day work week for some industries. The move is expected to help with a labor shortage in the country. People who opt to work 48 hours will get at least a 40% increase in overtime pay. And that's all we have for now. Remember to join us for KNOP's Panhandle Roundup weekdays as we highlight the new sports and weather that matters in Nebraska's vast panhandle. Have a safe and happy holiday weekend.